I'll do. So, in a bit of a random situation at the minute, I've kind of like overloaded myself with trucks, which I'm totally happy about. Not got a problem with that. I have all my stuff, well, majority of it here, and all my tools under the stairs. But also behind me is like where I do my radio from. I'm rarely using these at the minute, so I'm thinking of packing these away for now and getting rid of all these boxes of vinyl, not getting rid of them, just putting them away. <laughs> There's years of collections there. There's more under there, and I think at the moment I've been more suited with this workspace because my tanks took over here and I can't keep packing one away to get one out, to pack one away to get one out. My tanks are like a fiddly bit, like fiddly stages, all fine stuff, fine bits of painting and everything. I'd received that stretch custom sleeper and I built up the basic grand hauler chassis in the last one to then add another axle. But the stretched, I've been having a look around it and stuff and I kind of have an idea which is then going to end up being able to be utilised to put toward building another truck. Mental. It's amazing what you can do with scrap and leftovers. It is just absolutely so much fun. I'm just totally unorganised. But it's organised chaos that I can deal with. So we'll go in the living room now and we'll go over what I'm going to do with this stretch custom and what I'm going to utilise into that to then make something else in the future. Confusing, but we'll make sense in a minute. So let's go. So here I have the stretched like custom truck that Darren had started and kindly donated to me. And it actually come in sections. I have just put masking tape around at the minute just as to where it would be joined to sit on the chassis. It's currently on the custom Kenworth chassis that I'm building, but it will be on a meter length chassis, but it is actually, um, he was building it for a triaxle. And he's found those rails and kindly sending those to me so I can transplant this straight onto the triaxle chassis rails. So. I don't need to get those rails now to finish this truck. Um, however, I am just on with sorting the odd bits, like I say, that you do always use in your kits. So, what is done here is is like cut that door out of the side of the sleeper from there, and then using the same thickness plastic card, is like stuck another piece in, which then comes up to the other sleeper. And along there, I don't know if the light shows it, but there's, it's actually hollow there. So, it would have ended up requiring, like, to make a curved section there, like heating up some plastic card and gently bending it into the right shape, and then that fitting in and filling. And on the other side, he's kept it original there and just added a small section to like bring the cabs together so I've measured up the distance of the gap to fill and it's a three centimeter gap but with that triaxle it all seems to just box up nicely now a couple of videos previous I did mention before I'd received this that I was on about making a stretch sleeper out of Rusty's old sleeper but I'll also have this sleeper as well off the cab I got off Dave because that's going to be a day cab triaxle so that can be for something else another day but here what I am going to do is I am going to remove the section that Darren's put in and the other side and we're going to glue that back in and fill the original one back in. We can always flatten stuff off, smooth it, get rid of rivets, but I think its purpose for this may have been to then cut out the windows like you would get in um, some of these extended stretch sleepers. But we can always do that with this and stuff. But as I had a leftover sleeper, 
what I have done here is three centimeters to the outside of this masking tape here running up to the line which is actually in the sleeper from there and what I'm going to do is cut this three centimeter section out of the whole sleeper there and we can put that in place and then all the roof it has the lip and everything else can all like line up and it saves remaking a roof now here's where more fun comes into it because once we've took this section out we can then close this sleeper up which should look good on like a custom Peterbilt I've noticed a lot of the Peterbilts they have like the short little stubby sleepers and I just think you know <laughs> just keep recycling this so out of this I'm gonna get the section for this stretch and then we can do a swift cut and shut with the rest of it and there will be our Peterbilt sleeper so that's not for now that's later down the line but at the moment I am just gonna get on and get this cut out and then I can start working on just basically getting the sleeper all put back together and getting it built up as one while I'm waiting for parts on other things here's the current one I'm working on I've applied more filler since the last video but we are it's all getting nice and smooth and lovely all around just need to wipe off some excess filler there where I've still gone over again but this is all blending in nicely just still a little bit of work to do on the back corners and in between the sleeper and the cab is the fiddliest but I'm not in a rush with this truck whatsoever it's when I'm actually in the mood and I feel the patience to sit down for a few hours doing nothing but rubbing and sanding and stuff like that Otherwise, I'm going to end up rushing it and just making a hash of it. And it's kind of like, well, what was the point of putting all that time and effort into it to start with? So this one isn't like on hold or anything. It's just... I want to take my time with it. So we'll probably work now and slowly start getting this scribed and then we can cut that out we've also got Rusty out here um, basically all I'm going to do with Rusty is as I've received a new shiny back bumper for the King Hauler and my intention with this is to cut the dual lights out the rear lenses there and then put them into the front of the Kenworth build I'm doing so I get the dual headlamps but I thought rather than cutting up this nice sheeny shiny chrome one I may as well take this old abused one that's all faded and everything else and chop this one up I added the visor up the front uh, there's a little Chinese and Peterbilt thing there I got that just to see how it looked and I'm quite happy with it but yeah if you look at this truck in videos, all the chrome is absolutely worn. But that's what I want with this truck. I don't want it to look pretty. I want it to look used. So the dual headlamp conversion, I'll do that in another video when working on that truck. So I'll be just swapping these over for now. And basically working on the sleeper today. So using a scriber in the existing line... I've gone around and scored that a bit deeper and basically doing what I've done on the top here taped a steel ruler up to my line and then I've just run a Stanley knife in between just to score the paint so I can then run scriber along and again I'd previously attached the steel ruler there as you can see I've already scored that out and the same on this side so it's just working the rest of the top of it now and then I can slowly go through that with a razor saw once I have some clean grooves to work with 
But if we hold this up into the light, you can see where I've scored through, kind of. You can kind of see the light shining through now. So I'm not actually sewing at it, but merely using the point of the saw just to keep scoring it out. It's just keeping it like the most smoothest way at the minute. So by just applying a little bit of pressure on the end of the saw, when I run forward, it's just, like you can see, it's just scoring little bits out at a time. Nothing much. But if I just hack at it with a saw, then it just makes it a little bit messier to work with. So, it's time consuming, but we'll get there. So that's the cut been made and this is the section that I've originally cut it for to place that within the sleeper. That way I get all the roof, the lines, everything and it just makes the job a little bit easier in all honesty. Now shouldn't I have needed three centimetres to take out and only needed like 2.7 or something then in scale, we would then have a 36 inch sleeper coffin. We'll take a ruler roughly, we'll divide that by 10, and it comes there to 3, 3.4. So we're point 0.2 of an inch out from it being like true scale to 36 inch. So if you was intending to make your own sleeper coffin, you'd take like, 2.6 centimetres or something like that away rather than the three but technically we now have a custom coffin sleeper so I have gone in and just put some little bits in here and there just to cover the holes that I want filling where the grab rails were and again using some more little bits of scrap and stuff like that I've just made it so I can brace that in there for gluing. It's all scuffed up on the outsides and on the inside. So now I can then glue that together. 
and then fill that in. Now I am tempted to actually put this back onto Rusty. I don't know. We'll see. I've also chopped the back of the original floor plan which come with this as well. So once that's in there we can uh, use that over a floor plan. I will keep that mounting hole and I've just to uh, hacksaw the old bracket so we get that mounting bracket there and then the cab bolts up to the floor plan. I've since cleaned it up around the inner edge as well since the cut so I am just gonna have to remake another like small little bridge to go around for when I do put it back up against another cab at some point but if you are looking to make your own custom coffin and not in that respect like I say that was a three centimeter chunk that I had to take out but for your true true scale coffin I believe you'd have to remove I think around 2.6 centimeters or somewhere along that so I'm gonna get rusty and I'm just gonna pop that onto the back of rusty just so you can see that for like reference kind of thing so here's trusty rusty this is originally what this sleeper came off like I say now I am tempted to actually put it back on there <laughs> but yeah well uh, the floor plan would bolt back in as normal therefore giving me somewhere to put my battery everything does actually tuck up under the hood I've got the ESC the receiver and I have a shorty pack lipo which just sits on the top of everything there just nice and comfortably so with the coffin sleeper there we go like I say it still needs gluing together and I need to do all the filling and stuff but that's basically how to make that so it was quite fortunate really when I'd looked at the gap within that truck to use that section because I've kind of killed two birds with one sleeper there so it's awesome so I do hope um, some of you can take something away from that maybe have a go yourselves at making your own maybe you've got an old spare sleeper lying around that you've chopped off previously to make your own day cap and maybe now want to convert it back to something different or use it on another project like I say I needed the three centimeters so I couldn't make it to true scale but it's, it's a few millimeters out no one ain't gonna notice unless they get up there with the actual measuring tape and everything else so basically by taking that out I have created a 36 inch sleeper coffin so that's another one to the custom fleet that I'm currently building. I think we've got a fleet of five on the go and Dave has about three on the go at the minute. He's doing uh, like your cab overs, globe liners, he's cutting, stretching those and all sorts. And I'm working with the long nose trucks and then between us, we're gonna have one hell of a fleet. So I'll try and get over to Dave's one day. It's the school holidays coming up little ones at home for a couple of weeks so the videos might slow down there as time flies and you know I want to try and make the most of the time I do with my little girl while she's off school however she is in drama club and dance club for a week so that gives me some build time but yeah I'll try and uh, get over to Dave's one day and we'll go see Dave and I'll show you a couple of projects that Dave's working on that may interest you um, someone did mention maybe doing a cab over myself like I say I think I've got five custom projects on the go and the tank and the Volvo I have got back out to start getting that back together uh, I have no intention of using that as an RC it's too delicate too expensive for it to break and I think it would just make a nice display truck to go somewhere once I get all this organized so again thanks for watching do feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, do subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if the video ain't of interest to you, 
then just ignore it because I do get out on trails and do other RC stuff other than the trucks. So thanks again and ciao for now guys.